Try grabbing by the back legs. Reach down and grab his legs. There you go. Got him. Go. All right, everybody. Well, it's time today with the pigs to uh, give them some injectable wormer. It's it's worming time. They're in the weaning paddock. They're uh, sequestered there, so that's the best time to do it. I prefer to do injectable. I've just found it to be easier. It allows me to dose uh, consistently. Of course, there's there's oral worming you can give pigs, but with uh, with our own pasture situation where you don't have the pigs relegated, um, you're getting that proper dose. You'll be able to monitor that is a little bit more difficult for us on our operation. Some guys have success with it. And we also don't use poron because poron uh, pigs don't have pores, sweat glands for uh, the poron to soak into like you would with uh, cattle. So we, we don't go that direction. So the reason why I'm standing here and, and doing this intro of the video here and not over there with the pigs, as soon as we go over there, they're hungry for feed and they're going to be making a bunch of noise and it's something I'm going to have to try to talk over. So the reason why we worm at weaning time, A, that's the recommended time, uh, but B, it's just really convenient for us since they are locked up in the weaning paddock. We can get them in there with food, close the door, and uh, with the boys' help, we're going to be able to hopefully dose all 14 of them pretty quickly while they're chomping down on food. So the tools I need to do this, uh, we'll go over those pretty quickly. First of all, we need um, an injector, and I like to use these uh, Allflex. I mean, I've gone through multiple uh, injectable syringes or dosing syringes, and um, I've settled on this one. It was, it was worth the money. It was way more expensive than the other ones I had, but it's one of those things you definitely get what you pay for. So I like that one. And uh, of course, we also need, what do we need? Needles, oh, which I have needles inside the, uh, the injector here. So in this situation, since we're doing piglets, I like a shorter needle. Obviously, we don't want to go through the piglet. We just want to go intermuscular. Um, with uh, ivermectin, what we're using, we want to go intermuscular, subcutaneous, but we, we like to do intermuscular. So I go with a one-inch needle, and I'm going with an 18-gauge. With a piglet, you could do 20-gauge, since you're not having to introduce as much uh, you know, fluid into their, into their bodies uh, with a full-grown sow, then you could even go 16-gauge because you're, you're obviously providing a much larger dose and you want to get that in there as quickly as possible since you're sticking a needle in a pig. Uh, but an 18-gauge is, is right in the middle and it kind of works well for both. A shorter needle, of course, is what we're shooting for. So I've got those. And my other real popular favorite tool, love these things, is a slap shot. And this is just some surgical hose with a lure lock in for the needle on one end or a lure lock in on both ends, one to go into your dosing syringe, the other one to put your needle on, and of course you just simply slap it right into the neck. So when you have a needle on there, you just come up and slap it in, and that hose gives you some distance and flexibility so you can get your dose in before the pig you know, moves or turns. If you're just sticking a straight needle into their neck uh, from your dosing syringe, there's a chance you could bend or break that needle or you know, injure the pig more. I'll put a link down in the uh, video description to uh, these products on Amazon so you guys can check those out. Uh, also, we use uh, we want to mark, so we want to know who we got and who we didn't in all the hustle. We've got 14 piglets to do, so we want to make sure we get them all. So I've got a livestock marker, which never haven't had the best of luck with these things. Uh, so as a backup, we've got some rusty, trusty uh, paint here. So we'll give a little spray on the back there, not coat them too heavily, uh, but just a little spray. And, of course, our medication that we'll be dosing for worming. Uh, this is Normectin, which is an Ivermectin. That's the, um, you know, the uh, license name is, is Normectin. But uh, this is for cattle and for swine, and it's good for you know, worms, those type of parasites, mites, lice, blah, blah, blah. This dosing is all based upon weight, and we don't have a scale, clearly. Um, you know, we're not weighing each of our piglets. We're going to just estimate and based on that estimation, we're going to set up our dosing. Now, the way uh, ivermectin is, is recommended for injecting is one milliliter for every 75 pounds of pig that you're dealing with. 
So with these piglets being less than, I know they're less than 75 pounds, definitely, uh, they're going to range from that 25 to 35 pounds, I would say. Um, that's just an estimation. So we're going to do a, between a quarter and a half a dose. So with your... Um, with your syringe, you know, if you've got a half setting, that's awesome. If you don't, then there's some, some ways to get around that. You can, you know, give a partial dose, feather that a little bit. Um, things I've read, things I've experienced um, in the six years of doing this is I've never, I've never seen an overdose of ivermectin on a pig. So if, you're, if your syringe only goes to one milliliter and you should be given a half, even though it's double a dose, I've never seen... Um, in our experience, I've never seen consequences, negative consequences from that. But do your own research, check out your own stuff, and overdose at your own risk. And select your dosing at your own risk. That's the disclaimer for everybody that would complain and say, uh, don't say that kind of stuff, Troy. So you've been warned. All right, let's go get some pigs done. All right, so uh, of course, you know, now they're not screaming a little earlier in the day. One thing that we've done on the farm as well is we've used pumpkins as a natural dewormer. And, you know, there's a lot of speculation, wives' tales, those type of things associated with that. Pumpkins, you know, you, you, you come and buy them very easily this time of year, so it never hurts. Um, we just have some of these we're going to give to the sows to appease them while we work with the piglets before we feed everybody. These little snowball pumpkins are hard as a rock, though. Also keep my little uh, pig first aid kit here. Um, just going to get everything sterilized as best we can. I'm working in a dang pig lot, so do the best you can. Best practices there. alcohol. Easy girls. Rubbing alcohol right here on the top. Needle should already be sterile. So I get some interesting, I've, I've, I've done this, I've detailed this using a slap shot before many many years ago. Well, many several years ago and um, I've had people ask well how do you how do you get all the air out of the slap shot so you know you're getting the uh, you're not putting air in it and you got your dosing right well the if you look at the instructions on the slap shot the slap shot says the tube holds two milliliters of solution whatever you're injecting so what I do of course is just do the math today we're injecting 14 piglets with this setup I'm going to do the sows as well, but right now we're just going to focus on the piglets. 14 piglets at, let's just say for easy math, a half milliliter, that's 7 milliliters. Well, I know that there's, if there's 2 milliliters held in this tube, then I'm going to go ahead and put at least 9 milliliters in it. You know, you can end up wasting some product, or if you the type you want to stick it back in your bottle, I wouldn't recommend it. Just go ahead and, and uh, squirt it on the ground or, or dispose of it properly there. Just fill it up with more. So you still want to work the air out of it. You just have seven milliliters in your reservoir to here so that's a total of nine so just put more in it than you need and if you're using a dosing syringe and you've got the ability to you know squeeze to to initiate your dose you know every click is a one or a half or whatever then that takes care of your issues you know. so i find it easier to fill the dosing syringe well that lead without the slap shot on it and then you just add that after the fact Now, Liam, you go ahead and come on over, would you? Mm -hmm. 
All right. So we're just gonna, gonna get them in the neck, and then you try to mark the one they got, and I'll help you try to keep track. All right. No, no, no. Him, this guy right here. This guy right here. Okay. Oh yeah. Just anywhere. Just a line down his back. There you go. That works. That works. Big guy right there. Yeah, I think I did. Is that pin not working very well? All right, here, buddy. Here, switch to this. It's all right. It's this one right here. I can see the dot on. Put spray on him quick. There you go. You got to get a little closer with that spray. <laughs> guys. All right, so we got the piglets weaned. You can see a little bit of chasing around going on there. The smaller you can make the quarters, obviously the easier that is. Food distracts them. Now those livestock markers, man, I've never been a big fan of those and still not. So we switched to the paint can as you saw there. Liam did a good job of grabbing and marking. Got the sows dosed. Um, in this situation, again, totally uh, spitballing weight. And you, know, you just, you take your best guess there. Again, with what I've read and what I've experienced, it's really tough to overdose a pig on ivermectin. So, err on the side of caution, on the high end side, maybe. Um, Merida is not the easiest one to do. She's uh, she's hip to the game, and with her, I estimate her about 800 pounds. So um, that's like over 10 milliliters. So that's uh, that's a couple squeezes on the syringe, several squeezes on the syringe, and tough to get in her. So I I think I got a decent dose in her. We're going to do the bores later. In fact, we may make that a video where we do the bores and try to use the bridge that we created, put doors on those, and use that as an actual uh, dosing chute. We'll see. They may come over the top of it. We'll see, see how it goes. One thing to point out when it comes to food safety, of course, is no matter what you're injecting in your animals or, or dosing them with medication, be sure to look at the withdrawal period on that specific medication and follow that. Now, with ivermectin, there's there's multiple sources that I've looked at that that ranges when it comes to meat pigs. I've seen as as little as 15 days, and I've seen as many as 28 days. So obviously, 
err on the side of caution. So I usually go 28 to 30 days. In swine and in cattle, you'll see it goes up to like 55, 58, something like that. In lactating cattle, all that comes into play. So with pigs, meat pigs, that uh, withdrawal isn't as long as it is with cattle. So for intestinal parasites, the one dose will do it. Ivermectin, actually Normec, Normectin says their Ivermectin is long lasting in the sense that if you're double dosing for things like mites or lice, that you really don't even have to double dose. But in that situation, I'd recommend coming back 14 days later doing that dose again. So um, just a precautionary me uh, method. I have, not, I have not seen worms in the pigs, but it's just something you want to do. You know, you're not always going to see evidence of, of worms or worm eggs in, their, in the fecal material. All right, well, I hope that was useful. Y'all take care.